What's up, guys? Fucking Saturday here. <sighs> Sorry, I'm gonna make uh, just a little quick update video of Bitcoin broke 10k. Uh, I want to talk about some things to look for in this following week. Uh, when we first bounced on Bitcoin, this chart looks really fucked up, but uh, I'll show you why I have all these lines drawn. After, I'm gonna leave that one. Okay, so when we um, bounced from here, it was Litecoin leading. It's closing. So Litecoin was the one that led the way. I'm going to switch to a six hour chart. So yeah, we double top, we double bottomed. And then we, we were like, Litecoin was the one that led the way. And then it was Ethereum. Then it was Bitcoin that followed and broke through. Now Bitcoin is the one who has led the way. Or you would say that this happened and then Bitcoin took off afterwards. So going forward in terms of a pullback, you may want to see if Litecoin is leading those moves, meaning if this is the first one to pull back or if there's continuation, if this thing continues to take off, you would uh, like to assume that uh, Bitcoin is going to follow it. Uh, some of the stuff that's happening with Bitcoin right now is just straight up you know somebody supporting the price on some closes and on some big selling volume uh just you can just kind of look at the order book and see what's going on there uh what was I gonna say? Um, this move on bitcoin right now is is uh, i'm gonna show you guys from measuring by angle we are on a 62 degree angle uh depending on how your chart is set up like if, for example if i if i shrink it like this the angle will be different right but i'm just keeping it simple and i will put this here about a 63 degree angle and from this bounce at 5000 to the move 20 we weren't able to maintain 63 we broke out sideways and then we broke above here and then we found it for support but this move here was pretty much a 60 degree angle move from here all the way up and if you want to be more accurate you could go like this i would say like that and it was even steeper than 63 degrees. So take it how you want it. Do you want to bet that Bitcoin is just going to push through this resistance and this resistance and, and this downtrend line and break up back to 15K? Uh, possibly. Or are you more on the fence of this thing coming up to this area? And then breaking down this trend line and resting at 95 again. And that would create this kind of fractal. This V fractal that goes up, loses steam, comes back, finds support, and then takes off. So this is interesting to look for. Uh, if we're going to continue, I wouldn't be surprised uh, if we kind of followed this kind of pattern right here something like this this e would be like that that would be the b i'm just gonna try to slide it like that would be the v right there that would be uh, a break up 
to 15,000. Shock everybody, like what the fuck's going on? A sell down to 12,000. And then a move back up. And then we could go to continuation. So look out for this fractal. Because so far, the angle is playing out really closely to the angle we're at right now. You would have you would have to find re-entry around 95, 9,500. And that's Bitcoin. And to play a like a bigger idea is that if we are making a big reverse head and shoulders, inverse head and shoulders, something like this. You know, even up to here, and then a move down to fill this gap at 4,600 area. Why the fuck is this shit freezing all of a sudden? I'm not gonna piece of shit. Okay, so you can move like this, for example, fill this gap at 4,500, I would say, the minimum. This would be really, these swings would not make much sense, but there's another potential scenario on a big scale. I'm only looking at things on, on, a, on a higher time frame for Bitcoin. And then in between that, I'm playing the coins that I think are most likely going to give you the most gains. Like, you know, uh, Ethereum, Litecoin, etc. But, uh, yeah, I'm really just, like, my gut feeling is, t is telling me that this gap is going to get hit. This gap is going to get hit. And my gut feeling is telling me is we're not really done with this downtrend yet. Uh, however, the way the price is purposely being pushed and manipulated, uh, you just never know as well. However, one other thing I wanted to show everybody is a fib, a fib combo that I really like. Actually, before I show anyone the fib combo, I want to explain how I drew these boxes. So if you switch on, like, say, a six hour and you go to line chart, right, I'll just redraw these for you guys. Um, what I do is uh, for sell targets. I will take this low, for example, this peak, and you see how there's like a gap in between them almost? I will take the top area here. You could even go up here. And then I will draw it out to this gap. Yeah. Or you could even go a little bit lower. And for me, this is the resistance zone. This is where it had a high. This is where it had the support. And this is... For everyone who's trying to sell, who wants to know where to sell, I would just kind of zoom in. If you're, if the chart looks like this, and you don't really know what to sell because it's kind of yet to be determined. But once you've had your peak, and you start getting the lower highs. Um, you can kind of use these targets to swing trade to move back up. There's a lot of times the move back up is is not just straight up. It's a lot of boom, 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 boom. Right? It's a lot of testing and like finding resistance and then going down to find some support and then being able to break through that resistance. So that's those boxes that I had earlier. And what I wanted to show everybody was, is this the 800? There was this, this zone here. This to me is the beginning of this, this trend. And this for me is where I'm drawing my bigger picture fit. Because this was like ramp up. 
this is where we had that first gap at 1300 and then we ramped wave one wave two wave three and then now if this is a b c or is this one two three four down uh, but if you draw the fib extension from here you find all kinds of really cool confluence top 3000 ish so you have here is the gap the 786 the golden fib and you have the 3a2 holding on the first sell off then you have the 50 fib holding and you would say but yeah we broke through the 618 yes and no because if you switch this to um, the candle i really like how this looks look how perfect that looks we break it but then we just close the week above it you know so going forward keep your this should be your bigger picture fib uh, you can draw it from like 791 uh, i would just say uh, just make sure that 8.883 is the top, top of this and the bottom of that and the rest of it works out really really well really really well uh, yeah so here or here and it's weird because here is the the, the weekly cloud and that is around April 1st so we're gonna have I don't think we're just gonna go February boing, like I don't see that uh, I don't see that because another thing to keep your eye on I use this other I use Chrome but for charts and coinage and whatnot, I use this other thing, revealed or something. It's just a lot less buggy. Um, explore topic by Bitcoin. And yeah, it's low. So you can see it peaking here at 100. From the third to the ninth, and then it's going to go. Uh, it's not that people are not buying Bitcoin, it's just that dumb money is not buying Bitcoin, and you need dumb money to do this. So, this could be a reaccumulation stage, this could be you know, a swinger stage. Who knows? However, I really like how these fibs play out on a big picture basis. You know what I mean? You have wave one, wave two, wave three. You have the 618, the, the candle closing above the 618. You have this zone that's yet, yet to get hit. And the 786 just happens to be the golden fib. And then the 3000 mark, which a lot of people talk about, is the 88, is the 0.883 fib. And this is another thing that I have on my charts right now. Yes, this is. The 365 EMI and the three day uh, 365 EMI so far is floating just around the 88, the 0.883 fib. And uh, on the one day, we tagged that perfectly. That was basically the bottom, the 6,500 zone. Now we're moving up. And the real test is coming soon. The real test to me is this zone. And I expect this price to continue up to this 11,500 area. And then I expect 
a lot of short pressure uh, from there. So keep your eye on this cloud. If it breaks through this cloud, it would be huge. From a technical perspective, however, who knows what's going on with the games and who is leading the market right now and how they're how they're looking to screw as many people over as possible. Right. Like before, keep your trend lines set and observe the downtrend line. And three day level, I'm looking to see if we reject the cloud on the one day. three-day cloud to break through. That could be March, beginning of March. So, yeah, guys, if you guys are holding, keep holding. If you are sitting in some cash, I would try to play some USD pairs on Bitfinex, possibly. Uh, look for some coins that haven't taken off yet. And be willing to take profits at strong resistance zones because if we are in a downtrend, the money that you're making moving up here, the more you can preserve it, the more you'll put yourself in a really good position for that new wave that's going to come in. Fundamentally, there's a lot of bullish factors. Uh, however, like I always say, how big money plays the market is different than how, you know, Fucking Facebook group people play the market. They are patient. They don't. They would have no issues with the price going down more and keeping it there and accumulating more. Um, however, you have to do keep in mind also that this, this crypto market is very very young. This growth stage of the crypto market is only one year ago. Not even like this is March third. Now we're. February 18th, so March 3rd is this cloud here. So we're almost one year since we took off. So it's important to note that. And the only reason why I do have a bearish perspective is because if you do take into account things like the cloud, right, and how we how we stayed above it for so long and then you take things like 50 emis and, and, and 200 moving day averages and you see how we stayed above them for so long and then now you look at it and you see how we're breaking down on a big time frame uh, after so long we're breaking through these levels so those are the things that kind of make me cautious be honest if we were just maintaining and bouncing off these old levels i wouldn't be as cautious as i am now uh, however we still need to see more volume come in and we have to see that new money pour in for these new all-time highs and until those that new money comes in for the new all-time highs i could see us eventually breaking down to these lower levels uh, all right, guys, I think that's it. I think I covered everything. Uh, join the Facebook group. Join the private masterminds. Uh, we left a tip yesterday on a coin, and it went up almost like 30%, 40%. So the group pays for itself. Uh, in these downtrends, the group isn't as profitable it, i still believe it's profitable like you make your money back for sure if you take calls that we lay out for the month but in these downtrends the calls are a lot lower because you can't play the uptrend the same way you can't play the downtrend the same way you play the uptrend so yeah guys that's that thanks for watching the video like subscribe and uh enjoy your weekend